All right, so for problem 2.5, we have that the average yearly rainfall in Chiliville is normally distributed with a mean of 55 inches. And it's asking if the snowfall in Chiliville exceeds 60 inches and 50% if in 15% of the years, what's the standard deviation? So we want to find the standard deviation of this distribution. So let's start off by drawing a picture of a normal curve since we're told it's normally distributed. So it's normal with the mean of 55. So we'll 55 comma, and we don't know the standard deviation. So that means the middle will be 55. Now, um, it tells you that uh, the, the snowfall exceeds 60 inches in 15% of the years. So what we can also um, draw here is that to the right of 60, we'll put 60 over here, 15% of the total area or 0.15 of a 0.15 area is to the right of that. So that's gonna help us um, figure out what standard deviation is. So what we wanna do is, is find the corresponding Z score that would go with this value when you transform it into the standard normal distribution. So, so um, remember the standard normal distribution, let me put it, let me draw it right by side is you know normal with the mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So the middle here is zero. And these are essentially Z scores, remember? So Z values over here. Now, what we wanna do is figure out what Z value corresponds to the 60 so that it would, you know, give you the same area to the right. So in other words, we want to basically find, look at our normal distribution or standard normal distribution. Let's shade, you know, let's put this point 15 here and find the Z score that corresponds to, to that. And the reason is because when you're, um, you know, standardizing a value or changing one value in terms of, you know, in this case, in, in terms of this distribution to the standard normal distribution, you're basically changing, you're applying what's called a linear transformation. So you're gonna have this equation for Z where Z is equal to X minus the mean over the standard deviation. So here we have that the mean is 55. We don't know the standard deviation. And our Z value, or yeah, our X value here is 60. So what we're talking about here is Z will be equal to 60 minus 55 over the standard deviation over sigma. So we need to find Z in order to find sigma. And we find Z by looking at our standard normal table for the value that has 0.15 area to the right. So let's, let's look at that table here, table A. Now let's recall that the table shows, you know, the Z values with corresponding areas to the left, but that's not a problem because, you know, if 0.15 is to the right of this Z score, then that means to the left is an area of 0.85 because it has to add up to point, has, to, has to add up to one in total. So that whole area is, point, is 0.85 purple. So I look for the Z score that has an area of 0.85 to the left. So in other words, I'm gonna look at the interior. Now I know it's gonna be positive, so I'm gonna go to the other side. And I look at the interior for the value that's close to 0.85. And that will be right here, 0 0.8, 0.8508. That's the closest because this one is 0 0.5, 0 this is 15 away, this one's only eight away. So the Z score that corresponds to this would be 1.04, working from the inside outside, 1.04. So then this then becomes the equation 1.04 is equal to 60 minus five. So it becomes five over sigma. And then now it just becomes an algebra equation. So hopefully this is the easy part.
treat sigma just like a variable, you know, so we're gonna multiply both sides by sigma. So we'll get 1.04 sigma is equal to five. Divide both sides by 1.04. And I'll get that sigma or the standard deviation is, turn this on first, five divided by 1.04. Four point eight oh seven. So four point eight oh seven six nine. This is a multiple choice question, so let's look at answers. The closest one, and it looks like we'll have our answer will be A, and that makes sense because again, again, remember this is a these values are probably calculated with the um the technology, so they're more precise. So um, don't freak out again if you're like, oh, I'm off by you know a couple hundreds. The answers on an AP exam for statistics, it's never going to be about like you know calculation errors like that. The answer you can see the answers are clearly different. You're not having to have one that's like four point seven nine, four point eight five. You know, it's clear that it's going to be A. So the answer would be A. All right, moving on. So to the two point six. All right, so 2.6, we have this conceptual drawing. Let's zoom in on it. And we have these um, these letters corresponding to these, you know, markings on what we have. It says a density curve. We have seven values, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And we want to see which of these statements are true. Okay, so um, let's, let's go through them. Pretty much this one, you just have to verify each one one by one until you have one that's true. So that, means, so that means all of them are going to be false. So keep on going until you get a true one. So the mean of the distribution is E. Now, we're saying that the mean is here. Now, this, this curve is not, you know, it's skewed. You can't really tell what the mean is. Um, I mean, it could be E, but actually, no, it wouldn't actually. No, it wouldn't be E, actually. No, actually, this is clearly wrong because remember, mean gets means get pulled towards the tail. So the mean will have to be somewhat towards the tail. It would probably have to be you know, C um, or between C and D. So it's not going to be A for sure, because remember the mean will be more to the left. There between B and F is 0.5. There, so the area from here to here. Whoa, so all this, it's saying they're saying this whole, this whole thing is 0.5. No way, because the total area underneath the curve has to be has it be equal to one. So that ain't half the whole thing. So that is definitely wrong. 0.5 is not half of the total area of that. The median of the distribution is C. So the median is here. Okay, so now, so this is probably the tricky one. Um, the median remembers the equal areas points. So 0.5 has to be to the left and to the right of it. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to tell, but I mean, it's kind of, but it also is clear that this area is much smaller than this area. Um, the median would probably be somewhere between C and D, I would say. So the median, that would not be true. The median would have to be a little farther to the right of C. The third quartile distribution is D. So that's the third quartile. That means 0. 0.75 is to the right of that. That means all of this would have to be 0. 0.75. And no, that's not three fourths of the total area. Um, it's close, maybe it's 0.6 of it, but it's not. And it's not clear again. So it's not D, so it's probably going to be E. The area between A and G is one. Well, we probably, probably could look at that first. But um, yeah, because by definition, a density curve has to have an area of one. As if, remember, there's a couple of um, criteria yeah. that it has to meet, it has to be above you know, the normal, has to be above the horizontal axis, has to be, you know, let me actually just go back, maybe I actually just in my note, flash my notes so that you can know what to go over, because this is actually important. So usually, I usually go over this at the start of lesson 2.1. So here it is. Here's some criteria. Density curves have to always be above or on the horizontal axis, has an area of exactly one underneath it. Um, those are the two criteria. 
And then we add some more, we're gonna talk about normal density curve, that sort of thing. But um, then, it, then since it's total, it's a density curve, the answer would be E. All right, now let's move on to seven, 2.7. All right, here we got that, pull that, that, that the heights of a, of a population then follow a normal distribution and 99.7% of them have heights between five feet and seven feet. So what's the estimate of the standard deviation in this population? This one is actually um, pretty easy. If you get the, if you remember the, the 60, 68, 95, 997 rule. Make sure you memorize that, that's a big deal. It's gonna haunt you down all your statistics course if you don't memorize it. Let's go over it. What this says is that normal distribution, you know, will follow this rule where the, at the, that the mean or at the middle, the mean, yeah, that so zero standard deviations away from the middle and that'll be zero. So when we go one standard deviation away, so one to the right, negative one, to the left, and these are standard deviation values. That says 68% between those two. When we go two standard deviations away, so negative two standard deviations to the left or positive two standard deviations to the right. From here to here, there has to be 95% of the total area. And then when you go three standard deviations away, you have to have 99.7% of the total area. So plus three. Minus three. You definitely need to know this. Um, this is a big deal. It's, um, a, lot, a lot of statistics problems are based off of this principle. And this and there's uh, in the on any test on this on this chapter, it's definitely gonna um, have problems going up like um, assessing this concept and these topics. All right, anyways, so we're told that this distribution is normal and we're told that 99.7% of them have heights between five feet and seven feet. So that means that on the left, three standard deviations away, that would be five feet. And, two, and three standard deviations to the right would be seven feet. So then this would be, that would be five feet, five feet, zero inches. And this would be seven feet, zero inches. Now, since it has to, you know, follow this rule, let's just do some simple math. Five feet to seven feet. They're two feet away. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it feel better. They're two feet away. So since this is a symmetric, that means six feet has to be right in the middle. The mean of this distribution is, is six feet. Then it'll be 60 zero inches. And then from there, you can figure out what a standard deviation value would be because from six feet to seven feet are three standard deviations one, two, and then three. One, two, three. So six feet to seven feet, you know, that's 12 inches. So then 12 inches divided by three would be four inches. So this would be six foot four. It'd be six foot eight, and that'd be seven feet. And it's really that simple. Let me just write it here. So it's not even asking that'd be six foot four, that'd be six foot eight inches. And on this side, if we go backwards, that would be five feet eight inches, five feet four inches. Anyway, so that means the standard deviation would have to be four inches for this to work. And so then your answer would be C.